Hi, uh, this is a follow-up video on another video, previous video I posted on uh, what to do when you have model entities that are stuck inside this input buffer when the store server goes off shift. We have this option when you click on the store server, uh, off shift rule, finish work already started. This takes care of any model entity that's in the processing queue when the server goes off shift. However, it doesn't do anything for, for these uh, monitors that are in the input buffer. So in my other video, which I showed you one possible approach is setting up these add-on process uh, to basically check that input buffer when it goes off shift. And then you set this, set the store on a different schedule, this arbitrary overtime schedule. And that overtime schedule has this with a pattern where the cost multiplier is 1.5. Okay, and basically it stays on. Okay, you could change this to you know a different value or a variable. Uh, it should match this value here. Okay, so let's just assume everything's one though to make it easier. Okay, uh, the follow up question to this is, okay, so my server will stay on if there's uh, additional model entities inside the input buffer. But what happens if I add a resource? Okay, that's a secondary resource to the to to the uh, store. Okay, so let's say maybe this is the attendant. Let's call this the attendant, okay? Um, and the attendant is now tied to the store so that, you know, when someone, when a customer model entity enters the store, it can only be processed when attendant is also available. Okay, so I'm gonna set that logic up first. I'm gonna go into secondary resources here. So for processing, um, I'm gonna do, um, uh, repeat group true resource and then I'm going to set this to one add a row I'm sorry add a row and I'm going to set the attendant and all I need is one right so just one say close and so I'm going to need um, the attendant every time a uh, monitor comes in now um, we could also you know um, there is this option you probably already saw it is um, there's an add-on, no, I'm sorry. There is a, um, the store, you see for secondary resource, it says off shift rule. You, you can also set this to finish work already started. You can also change it to switch resources if, if available. So this means like if there's multiple attendants, right? Um, and you know one goes off shift, or maybe you're working off a list, okay? Uh, one goes off shift, right? Then it'll try to go to a different available resource if, if possible. Okay, um, so that, that, that'll that partially take care of the issue, okay? It won't completely take care of it because you still have this issue where, um, you know, it only deals with whatever's already started processing, right? So um, you can set this to Swiss resources or finish processing, uh, you know, kind of experiment with that and see which one works for your specific case. But really the bigger issue is, uh, so if I run this right now, you'll notice, so let, let me set up the uh, schedule for this resource first so that if I run it right now, nothing will happen because, well, actually it'll run because this attendance just always on, right? Okay, it'll run when the store turns open, right? Um, so, but I, I really, I, I really want to set a schedule for the attendant as well, okay? So let's set up the uh, schedule for the attendant as well first, okay? So I'm going to data. I create another schedule for the attendant. Okay, oops. Uh, let me double check here, make sure I don't have any unnecessary. Oh, let's see. Oh, so I can't, yeah, okay. So I can't set this as the same name. So attendant, um, call it attendant schedule. Okay, that. And then for the date pattern, I'll call this day okay and its pattern is i'm gonna make it uh let's see to make it a little bit different um or you know i can match it exactly as a store right so right now the store is uh so technically i could just use a store day pattern but you know with just for flexibility i'm gonna make it separately uh, maybe later on i do want to change it oops, oops. change this At 12, let's say this match at 12.30 and then it'll run for five hours, just like this actual server, okay? And everything is the same one-on-one, -on -one, okay? That's the attend day. 
and I'm going to attach that to my attendance schedule. 10 day, 10 day, 10 day, 10 day, 10 day, 10 day, 10 day. Okay. Now I'm going to go facility. I'm going to put the work schedule on my attendance. Okay. So once I run this, nothing should happen for the first half an hour. You see both of them are white, so they're both off shift. Okay. Once you hit 0 0.5, you see now they're on shift. Okay. Now run, and then once it hits five, uh, sorry, 5.5, uh, in the previous video, the store processed everybody, right? Because it basically turned on to that overtime schedule. But now you'll see this other issue now. So, you see we're at 5.6, um, the store is going, but the tendon is now off shift, right? Let's see what happens for the rest of the simulation then. So you see now nothing's going on, right? Nothing's moving, right? By this point, everything should be cleared out, okay? The processing time for each is only 10 minutes, it should be cleared out, right? Basically, these entities are not stuck and waiting for the tendon to come back on shift, okay? So same issue, but now we're, the issue is being caused by this secondary resource. Okay, so how do we deal with this? Uh, the approach is very similar on how we dealt with the um, issue with the single, um, with the server, okay? Uh, we dealt with it by creating these add-on processes for off shift and uh, exit it. Um, we're basically gonna do the similar thing with the resource with a few, probably a couple of wrinkles here, okay? The first thing I wanna check is oh no, when the attendant goes to off shift, what do I want to do? Okay, so when it goes to off shift, I wanted to check basically, are you doing anything else? And then you know decide, you know, if you're off, if you're going, if you're doing something, if you're if you're basically doing something, you're processing a, a request, you're being seized, or if there's anything on the waiting queue for that server they're attached to, then you're gonna go to a different schedule. Okay. So um the first step here is I'm going to decide, okay, and is there anything in my allocation queue, right? So is it something, you know, waiting for, something waiting, um, you know, basically waiting for you to free up for a second seize you, right? Okay, so allocation queue, that number waiting has to be greater than, so there's something waiting to seize you, okay? Um, if that's true, okay, I'm gonna take a similar approach and like set up a variable that tells me uh, it's off shift, but there's stuff waiting, so you're still gonna operate. So go to definitions, go to state. Uh, so, and remember I created the store. You actually don't need these right here. Um, let's see what those are. Oh, so this is, these were just things that we I was playing around with earlier. We don't need those. Okay, so let's go back to states. So store off shift, in a similar way, I'm gonna create the, um, I'll call it attend off, sh off shift, okay? So attend and goes off shift, you know, just be consistent here. Let me capitalize that as well. Um, attend is off shift, okay? So then I'm gonna set this value, that value to one. So attend off shift. This value is now one. So what does that mean? It means right now the attendant should be is off shift technically, right? Based on the schedule. But because there are things that are waiting to seize that resource, I'm gonna set this true. So then I'm gonna set this variable to one. So I know this is a case where we have to make sure this resource or this attendant stays on, even though technically it should be off shift. Okay. So what do I do then? I'm gonna do a set work schedule here. Same approach as it all, right? I'm gonna set a work schedule. I'm gonna do a specific object and I'm gonna say, okay, attendant. Now utilize that overtime schedule, okay? Uh, so as long as the, the, the value or the capacity basically during the schedule is the same, you don't have to make a separate overtime. If that value changes, like for example, you want the, the, the uh, you're, if you're using like a reference property to set the capacity based on a work schedule, then you would have to make a separate one that's distinct from the one you're using for the store, okay? But for now, I'm gonna just all one, and the concept's the same, right? Okay, so I'm gonna set that to one. What am I gonna do next? This is where I'm gonna diverge a little bit, okay? Um, I'm gonna set the work schedule to one, and I'm gonna also 
um, set the capacity. And this is where you can kind of also, you know, play around and kind of change things around. I'm going to just set the capacity here to one as well. Uh, there's also, again, there are different ways to do this. Okay, so let's see, 10 then dot current capacity. And then set that value to one. So if you want to set to something else, you can, you can even reference a property here if you want a different variable. Okay, so this aside, is there anything waiting for me if not? So let's run this and see what happens, okay? And you should notice that nothing actually gets fixed. Nothing works the way it's supposed to. So once it hits 5.5, you'll notice you'll, well, you still have the same issue as before. So our add-on process hasn't really solved this issue. Okay, there are a couple of things you have to think about here, why this is happening. One, two, three, four, five, okay. So right here, oh, it is working, okay. So it is finished processing, okay. So it turns on and then it finishes and everything looks okay, all right. Um, let's add, uh, let's experiment this a little bit though. Um, let's give it a different scenario here. Okay, it's the same way we did with the server. Now let's add in this, you know, uh, logic where, so if I keep running this, you'll notice that once the store, uh, once the, all of the model, customer monitors are finished, uh, the, the attendant stays on, right? So attendant is still on shift. Uh, we, we saw the same issue when we were working with just a stored server and we had to add in that add-on process to basically check and then go off shift when it's all done. So you see right there, attendant is still on shift, right? So we're gonna add in the other part and this should then create a couple, another issue, yeah? But so the way we're gonna do that is, you know, what's analogous to like, you know, uh, when a modern entity leaves a store the, the server, if you're looking at the exit and add-on process, what's similar or analogous to attendance resource is released, right? Uh, when a resource is released, that's basically when a modern tenant let go of that tenant, right? It's, uh, you know, doctor or nurse, you need it at the urgent care room, it's been released, right? So released. Uh, so what do I do? You decide again, similar to what we did down here, right? You decide, uh, let's decide. Uh, you know, are you at that condition? Uh, and then off shift, is that equal to one? Remember with the data up here, you know, is that, is it one? As in, you know, are we in the special case where it's off shift technically, but we have stuff to do. These have, you know, patients to our customers to serve. So that's true, then it'll go to the true clause. Then you have to decide, are there anything waiting for me, right? So I'm sorry, not deciding. Let's decide again. Decide attendant dot location queue dot number waiting is that equal to zero? So, is there anything else waiting in my uh, resource key? Um, there isn't, right? Then it's zero. Then it's true. If there is, then it just go to false, right? And nothing will happen, right? If it's true, that means that it's empty. There's nobody else waiting, right? So then I'm gonna set up a variable here. So I'm gonna, I'm sorry, not assign, my, my apologies. I'm gonna set a work schedule again. I'm gonna return it back, set it back to my original work schedule, right? So, so set object, resource attendant, and we'll do attendant schedule, okay? And then now we also then have to reset that variable that we're using, uh, attendant off shift, right? So I'm gonna set that variable, attendant, off shift, I'm gonna reset that value to zero. Okay, you can leave it or just type it in if you want, okay? So now this takes care of the issue. So it should turn off. We should see the uh, to turn on once it, you hit hour 5.5 .5 in our example. Um, but you'll see there's a different issue that happens here. Okay, so four or five, everything looks like it's working fine. Okay. Right when it hits 5.5, .5, it was working earlier when we didn't add in that um, uh, released add-on process. Let's see what happens when it hits 5.5. .5. Okay, so now you see right away, the tenant is off shift, right? For some reason, it doesn't stay on shift. It doesn't run this add-on process for some reason, okay? It does this last part, right? It looks like it does this last part because this is what we just added, right? 
okay? Um, or, I mean, it just doesn't work like it did before, right? Okay, so what's, what's going on? How do we fix this issue? Okay, so this is where we diverge a little bit from the server. Um, you know, we do have to check, you know, this is a case where nothing's, nothing may be in the store or you, you know, there might have nothing in the allocation queue for the tenant, okay? Then this attendant has to check, are, is there anything in this input buffer, okay? If there is, then wait a little bit so that, you know, there maybe there is a request uh, for the attendant, right? So there's something in the allocation queue for the attendant, then the rest will work, right? So we're gonna artificially add a small delay so that the attendant waits just long enough to see if there's anyone else needing their assistance. So basically if you think in real life, like the attendant is at the store, yeah, you know, just just because you're off shift, like no one's like asked for an explicit, don't just leave. Like wait a split second and see somebody needs you as a secondary resource in that store server. Okay. So that's the logic I'm gonna add in next. So I'm gonna let's see. Um that's it's this off shift um add on process there. So I'm gonna decide. So I'm gonna check, is there something in the input buffer? Okay, they haven't explicitly made so. You don't you don't request to be seized, right? You, the 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 customer audit team is not going to request the um, attendant resource until you're at the processing queue, right? But you're at the input buffer queue, so now you haven't actually requested it, right? So, um, if there's is there anything at the store input buffer? Okay, buffer contents dot number waiting. Is there anything waiting in there? Okay. If there is, then what I want is add a small delay, a very small delay, right? I don't want to put too many because that'll distort the results a lot. Let's just put like one second, right? Uh, so like basically it waits one second and says, okay, um, you know, it decides, is there, if this means, if it's false, if this condition is false, that means there's nobody requesting the attendant resource right now. There's nobody requesting it, okay? So that's the false case. But then you check, is there anything at the input buffer of that store server? Because the store server is what uses the attendant as a secondary resource. If that's true, then it'll wait one second to allow the request to happen, right? Uh, if it's false, then it'll just, nothing will happen, right? Um, you know, the attendant could basically leave, right? Okay, if there's a small, if there's anything waiting in the input buffer, I'm gonna put a small delay and I loop it around and to run this check again. Okay. So this just gives a split second wait so that you know it checks again. Is there anything request in the tenant? If true, then the rest will work, right? If not, it'll go down here and maybe we'll just finish that this way, right? But this now fixes that issue where the attendant leaves immediately rather than wait for stuff in the queue to finish out. Okay. So let's test that out. So I'm gonna run this. Again, if once it's 5.5, we'll see how it reacts here. So everything acts the way it was acting before. Now, once you hit 5.5, let's see what happens. Let's see, here, one, two, three, four, five. So now you see the tenant is still working, the store is still uh, working, and then these customer lines are being processed. Let's see if both of these turn off then once the input buffer has been cleared out. Okay, now you see they both been cleared out and they're off shift again, right? Okay, so this now takes care of the issue where you have stuff waiting in the input buffer when, it, when the store goes off shift. It also takes an issue where if you have a tenant set as a secondary resource to the store server, the tenant also stays on, okay? All right, so hopefully this is helpful. Uh, in another video, I'll talk about the financial uh, or the cost implication of this. Um, how do you tally this up and make sure it's working properly? It's very simple. So um, we'll make sure that if this is all um, hooked up correctly. So you can take a look at this file, um, you know, the, uh, post this example, and you can take a look. Uh, hopefully this helps you with whatever you're working on, okay? Thanks for watching. Take care, bye.